10 he ended up with that one. So same amount of kills, same amount of uh, assists over yes. both of those games. We'll see how he goes up here against Mr. Reliable Kevin on Mundo. Yeah, well, we'll see how that matchup plays out. As we said, interesting is the the phrase we're going to go with for this matchup. Whether or not that turns out to be true will be determined, as we do see Edward and Jerry just really just showing a little bit of force. I mean, we've got our trinkets as well, getting some vision. No, no invades from either of these teams. And once again, we are going to see those straight head-to-head -head matchups. Our solo lane is up top, and our duo lane is down bottom. Yeah, I've seen most of this one. Important for the duo lane is to be roughly at the same time there to this bottom lane just to make sure they don't lose out on that race to level two, which you know, with someone like Leona can be very important for you. Yeah, that is definitely the case, especially once they race to uh, get those skills available. The all-in potential in the lower levels is determined by whoever pulls the trigger first and lands that CC. Ironically, as we're talking about bottom lane, it's actually Kerp and Alex that trade some damage back and forth at level one. Gregus can actually do pretty well once he starts to get that attack damage buff of his Drunken Rage, so got to be a little bit wary of that. Yeah, we'll see if Alex uh, decides to go aggressive once he starts to uh, level up here a little bit. Kerp keeping his distance right now, and there is Alex going in once again. And then goes back off, and there he has hit level two. Kerp getting it exactly the same time, though, so I'm guessing his point's gone into the body slam there, too, so he can keep himself safe. He actually, actually drank, his w, yeah. Yeah, actually drank from the Drunken Rage, and at level one, it's plus 30 bonus attack damage. So as long as Kerp reads the situation well, he can actually come out ahead in trades. His passive as well will also allow him to regenerate some HP, so he should actually get a little bit of authority in that lane unless he gives up a kill. If he gives up a kill and Alex is able to continually win fights over and over, then Kerp is not going to be able to pull himself back in. So the very first kill between these two is incredibly important to determine the tempo of the rest of the lane. You see that Alex is ahead by a decent margin here in terms of CS. Actually going to go in here on towards Kerp, but that's a lot of damage. Half of Kerp's health bar disappears. And that's exactly what Alex is going to keep trying to do. Whenever you play Riven, you have to continually get in your face. And yesterday, Alex was doing that with LeBlanc against Peke's Oriana. He kept control of the lane. He had superior farm. Right now, the two junglers of our featured matchup, they're running toe-to-toe. -to -toe. It's a level three diamond, and he'll take the big wolf. Takes the big wolf, and actually landing the Q here on towards Aranea. This could force a flash out of Aranea, you know. And, well, as I say, Aranea flashes away. Diamond says, not bothered about chasing from that one. I'll take what's in your jungle, and I'm happy you've got no flash for the future. If that had been a second or two later, Diamond could have followed up with a sonic wave. There was three seconds on the clock before it went in. So, almost kill potential there. And Alex has caught Kerb. Yeah, going straight in onto him with this one. Going to get the knock up and almost dodging the barrel. Almost not being... Uh, really fully there, but he's doing a great job here. 24 to 13 CS, and we can see that Diamond hanging off to the side. Kerb should have a little bit of an inkling that he's around there somewhere after an a RNA was forced to flash earlier on. In the end, they don't see an opening, and Kerb will be safe for now. With Kerb being so low on mana right now, Alex is in no threat of taking additional barrel poke, and he can just carry on diving onto Kerb as long as he's in front of the tower. Yeah, going straight on into him. Actually, again goes in. This take a turret hit this time around, but Kerp, again, not really even able to farm things up. And Alex has doubled the CS of his uh, opposite number. This bottom lane being fairly quiet up until now. Yeah, at this point in time, Alex is just in complete control of mid because of the way he's played this early game. The bottom lane, five CS difference. I mean, they're, they're, not, they're not going in for each other. Level three Leona versus level three Thresh. Also, two exhausts as far as our supports are concerned, and also flash teleports for our top laners. So let's keep that in mind as they get closer to level six. The first real sort of gank in lane, as it were. Aranea is trying to sneak into the bottom lane, but a ward in that bush will reveal him. So no real attempt coming from that one. I think. Uh, with the exception of mid lane, fairly slow farming start between Millennium and Gambit. Which is, I think, what we expected from this one, to be honest. Millennium yesterday ramped up slowly. I think it's fair to say against SK, they had a big lead. But look at this, Diamond has come around the back. And Kevin, as Mundo, not got his ultimate just yet. That's a good briefcase thrown in there. And Diamond actually taking quite a lot of damage there. And he might have to just back off. Yep, they've not got the damage at this point to finish off a Mundo. Yeah, it did, man. It did need to get away just a little bit there. Sonic Wave applying some damage and pulling him into the bushes. Right now, though, the one thing we're going to talk about, the first back from Kerp on that Gragas. He's got himself three Doran's rings. So 
feeling the pinch, feeling the pressure of Alex in that mid lane. He wants the additional HP, ability power, and mana regen to try and throw out more barrels and make up that CS difference. He was about 15 or 20 down. That is still sitting in about the same case. And we'll have to see if Alex can maintain that lane dominance with his Vamp Scepter and Pickaxe that he's picked, uh, Longsword he's picked up. Nice bottom lane. Still, I think, dangerous in the fact that you've got Leona and Thresh in there. And when one of them, especially Edward, you know, he's, he's a guy that once he's made his mind up, he's definitely going to be going in for that one. Jerry, we'll see if he uh, has a similar thought to this one. There's the continued dominance of mid lane. Aaron A are not going to come around. He's currently level four. I'm going to do a bit more farming. He's right now six CS back behind that of Diamond who is on the top side of his own jungle doing the golems. Yeah, crucially, he doesn't have that flash available. It, it will be up in the next sort of minutes and a half. And the first invade that we've seen from Diamond was incredibly successful. He found Aranea. Lee Sin is a better duelist at levels, you know, one to four than Vi is. And until Vi gets some items, he's not really going to be able to contest with all of the additional damage and kill potential that Lee Sin offers. So Aranea playing a little bit of catch up as we see Diamond once again moving to his red buff. I think we may see Diamond Prox moving into lane once he gets these next buffs. I think that's probably going to be the signal. He's got his Dragon Rage available, his kill potential with all of the CC in the middle, the top lane, and the bottom lane, as long as some of those hooks or Flame Chompers connect. Oh. Millennium here just backed off somewhat from this bottom lane. Couple of wards coming down, and Jerry actually getting all three hits off required onto that one. And that will mean and it's... Uh, Pretty much waste. Obviously came from the trinket, so not really costing them anything in the long run, but you know, a ward that's not giving you any vision could, in theory, be costing you. Yeah, very smart positioning there from Jerry. Still hanging out in the bushes, trying to just, you know, play a little bit of zoning. For those of you that don't know, uh, Leona's Q, the shield of daybreak, it actually resets your auto attack. So you can land an auto attack, Q the ward, and then immediately land another one. That's what allows you to get it down before it hits the stealth. And as we were talking about, Diamond now level six. He does have that red buff available. He's now setting up a gank. He's actually foregone the blue buff, which has respawned. And if uh, Creatin and Jerry stick around or they get caught, they could be in trouble. Yeah, the hook oh. missing. The Q will land, but it's on to Jerry. <laughs> Level 5 Leona. And Diamond says, nope, that's not going to happen. We're going to back off. Actually, Alex and Kerb going to exchange some damage from this one. Alex. Going pretty aggressive there. That's forced Jay, uh, Kerp away. So two things, very quickly. The bottom lane, that was an uninspiring gank. Death Sentence didn't connect. Diamond Prox lands his Sonic Wave and backs away. In the mid lane, Kerp actually psychs Alex Hitch out, makes Alex think that an uh, explosive cask is coming in, and almost anticipating the battle, throws down his ultimate. However, now, here comes Lee. Oh, they kick back there on towards Kerp, who separates them both with the barrel. He's going to body slam away as well with the use of his flash. And he gets away. Incredible. Very nicely done. Dodging that third strike of the broken wings from Riven would have knocked him up in the air, allowed more of those red buff stacks to be applied and just slowed and held in place, potentially to be killed. So nice reply from Diamond. He manages to get another flash out of Millennium. But for the time being, no kills on the board as we approach the 10 minute mark. That's level six, RNA just throwing off a ward into the dragon pit. And we're almost at 10 minutes here. It's Usually the kind of time where Gambit are already thinking about going towards Dragon, but also you might argue a time where Gambit have maybe already got something on the board to allow those uh, Dragon plays to come in. And right now it's pretty damn even across the board. Yeah, I think because we've got the straight head-to-head matchups of the 2v2s and 1v1s, etc., it slows down your landing phase. It extends it quite naturally because you're trading. You can see Millennium's tower has barely been touched as is a, a very similar situation for the Gambit squad. And until a clear victory has been won with a kill or with immense vision control, I don't think we're gonna see that dragon being started. The first real aggressive play on the map is coming from Millennium as they want to make a play for red buff. It has already been taken. It was a little while ago and we do see Aranea catching diamond out. Yeah, going on to him. And actually they're gonna throw assault on battery his way, but have they got the follow up onto it? No, they haven't. Did use uh, his kick there in that one so that's you know an ultimate for an ultimate the junglers both losing out on that front yeah nicely done there by diamond just to get away <laughs> very cheeky from kerp actually steals the wraith and i think had diamond been a little bit slower on that dragon's rage kick backwards kerp could have potentially gone in range he had no flash available thanks to the gank so there was no flash cask that could come down diamond once again playing a little bit uh safe or rather getting out quite cleanly so well played to him there 
Millennium right now, I think, keeping up. CS numbers even across the board. And considering how much pressure Kerp was feeling very early on, I think he's done very well for that Gragas. Yeah, farm down on this bottom lane. Actually, five different. That's, that's been how it's been for the entire game yeah. almost at this stage. Now, we do have two parts of the Trinity Force for Creatine. And Genja actually with that BF sword, a second Doran's Blade and the Long Sword from a little earlier on as well. The supports also go in a similar route. I don't think either of these dual lanes really want to have a big fight because we haven't seen Jerry going in for any engagements. Now that he's got Solar Flare and Aranair moving up, this may be the ghost signal. And even Edward's, you know, death sentences, they've been a little bit lackluster here. We do see Diamond Prox has stood right on top of a ward there, so Millennium will be aware of his positioning. And if Aranea comes in, he doesn't have that Assault and Battery, so they need to draw out this bait a little bit longer before Aranea's got that guaranteed lockdown. Maybe once Diamond is gone, this is the signal now to go, and they've done it. Yeah, they have Diamond out of that one. There's the ultimate coming out of Leona, and True Shot Barrage comes across as well. In the end, they're not able to pick up a kill, but Creatine going aggressive. The Zap will slow him down. They've landed the hook as well, but Gambit can't follow through, and Millennium bully them out. If Edward sticks around, Assault and Battery's available. Aranea may throw himself in. Yeah, they've thrown the box down there. There is Aranea going down. He's taking a lot of damage and actually gets away from the turret, but look at this. Warwick's coming around the back. They're all low. This could be disaster! This could be disaster for Millennium! Darian gonna ult in towards Aranea. Creatine going low. Have they got the damage to finish him off? One or two more hits will do it. Uses a barrier. It's a kill for Diamond. There is Heavy now in the bottom lane. And Gambit walk off. That's three for one. Very good turnaround from Gambit. They lost Edward under the tower, but a very clear call that a teleport was coming in from Darian. Edward threw himself into Millennium, held the members in place long enough for Darian to arrive. Thanks to the kills that they've secured and the numbers advantage, plus having Smite available, they now grab themselves a Dragon as well and give themselves a 2,000 gold lead. That was very good calling from Gambit and very good reactionary play, realizing, hey, we're gonna lose members under the tower, but we can turn it around by picking up kills and following it with the Dragon. Let's have a look down some of the items now. We've got, a, I say a bit of a breather. That was the only real action that we have uh, seen so far. If we look up towards the top lane, Darian in there with the Chalice. Just finish off his wit's end as well after uh, picking that last kill up. We also have the BF Sword added into the Vamp Scepter for Riven in the middle. And we can see that Gragas, Kerp, pretty standard start against someone like Riven picking up um, the Seeker's Arm Guard for the start of it. Yeah, because he's gone for the Triple Dorans, it's actually also slowed him down from progressing further in his build. Currently sitting on just shy of 1,600 gold, so needs to get a good couple hundred more up before he can finish off the likes of that Zonya's Hourglass. But when you're facing all of the physical damage that Riven's putting out, you can't afford to go for MR or a similar build. We actually seen Kautar doing that on Zyra yesterday. It didn't work out for him, uh, you know, focusing on that Athens and Holy Grail against the car Zix. So no. smart decision making from Kerpen. It's keeping him alive. He's still only 10 CS down. Well, if we look at the gold total here over the game, 2,000 is what Gambit lead with. Obviously, all things considered, that 3 to 1 kill score line and the dragon straight after that as well. We can see the individual scores there from the lanes. And between most of them, there's not that much of a difference. It's just in the jungle, really. Yeah, and that's, of course, because of the fact that Diamond's got himself that kill in there. He's also managed to be involved uh, with the Dragon pickup, so a little bit more global gold on his side of the map. They've caught Edward at great in it. Great indeed, and the box goes down, and that stops J. Reed from pushing any further through. The Chompers came in as well. We did see Kerb starting to roam down that bottom side, but in the end, not really able to lock them up. You have to give credit to Edward as well for the flay that stopped JRE coming in. Yeah, immediately just pulled him backwards and prevented that. The solar flare was a tiny bit off. But I think good reactionary play. Now, with Diamond Prox moving towards the river, if a death sentence connects, they may want to be going in for a fight. And as I start saying that, I'm a little unsure about where he wants to move. See you. Yes, it wow. does catch out Creatin. There comes Genja. That was a brilliant hook coming in, but Creatin able to walk away. There's the Chompers onto Jerry, which means he takes a lot of damage. Genja has the lantern there for safety, but he's happy to do the damage. There's Whoa. a super mega death rocket, and Creatin survives with about 20 HP, I think, overall from that one. So very close for Genja. Very close indeed. As it stands right now, the hook goes out, doesn't connect our end. Genja. 
you feel like they deserve that one. Connected every single shot, forcing the dual lane of Millennium backwards. Alex and Diamond are trying to roam. Sonic Wave is caught. Arane, and here comes Alex. Oh, Alex coming in there as well, but they couldn't quite get behind them. And get that kick on there. That's what Diamond was looking for. Throw one back into the team. Millennium have replied by coming over to this bottom side. I think Gambit might want to be heading away from this one. There's a barrel. It locks down two of them. Edwards a dead man. Kurt gets that. Assault and battery goes all the way through the wall. There's a solar flare as well. Genja's not getting out of this one. That will be Arenea's kill. And Millennium turning around just like that. Very good turnaround. But that is a mistake from Gambit. They dove for the kills. Got me super excited that they we're going to go for the fight, and Alex backed away. Unfortunately, the rest of the team did not respond as quickly. As such, they lose two kills. Gambit's, uh, Alex has dealt a lot of damage on the mid lane tower, but has been unable to secure it. And the first tower of the game should, in fact, be falling as Millennium try to shove this one down. They're actually denying CS here from Gambit's dual lane. It will eventually fall victim, so a very good reactionary play to Gambit's overextension. You're allowed to get overexcited. I casted a replay yesterday, so you, <laughs> you're allowed one of them per day, I've been told. Alex here, just making sure that his turret doesn't take too much damage as Kurt just throws that wave back in his direction. So after that, we're all tied up on the kills. Obviously, Millennium have that turret advantage. Gold's, yeah, it's been brought back here to about a 1,000 between them. We've got the Dragon coming up in less than two minutes. That's our next big fight point, surely. Now, yesterday, Millennium had great Dragon control against SK Gaming. In this matchup, they were unable to secure the first one because, of course, they lost the fight. And I think Gambit is still probably my favorite team when it comes to Dragon control in Europe. I think they put more emphasis on that objective than many of the other European teams. And we'll see how Millennium decide to challenge. There's a lot of wards down already for Gambit in and around that river that are starting to time out. So they'll need to refresh those as Dragon is getting closer to spawning. And that could be the next point of uh, contention. One minute to go on that one. Jerry's got a pink ward inside of the tribush plus couple around that dragon pit as well. So the duo's going to face off here once again. In terms of items, Creighton already got that Trinity Force in there, the Bloodthirster on the other side. There's a Bloodthirster for Alex along with the Brutalizer as well. We already talked about that Zonya's Hourglass a little earlier for Kerb. In terms of the, uh, the tanky top lanes, we only really saw with that teleport coming down there. Sunfire Cape for Mundo, that Wits End, the Chalice, and now a Giant's belt added in actually for Darian on Warwick. Yeah, it's similar build that he did yesterday, in fact, and like he ran at Battle of the Atlantic. A very good build, and you know, this interesting matchup is just a farm fest. Once again, with both uh, top laners running flash teleport, there's very little possibility of them killing each other without jungle aid or even mid lane aid in this situation. And with teleports being available and Dragon coming up, look at the vision for both of these teams. There are three Gambit wards close to the pit, three Millennium wards just below the pit, so they should be aware of when this objective is being started. And I think that both of these top laners will most likely get involved by using those teleports at some point. Yeah, there's no way they can clear everything out there. Two sweeping lenses to one, actually. Millennium with two on their side. Uh, both supports actually got it. It's Aranea that makes the difference on that front of things and that will allow them to clear a little bit out. Pink Ward's also down as well for both teams, although one is in the Tribush, one in the Death Brush on the top side of the Dragon Pit. And Alex each there just going in towards RNA is like, nope, I'm getting away from that one. And as we said, Dragon, not really the team having too much control of it, which means they're a little bit uneasy now. Yeah, very smart play by Aranea. The moment Alex showed his face, he backed away with Vault Breaker. He does not want to get caught out because there's a lot of bursts that can come down from that Brutalizer plus Bloodthirst Riven. The wards are timing out and, and getting replaced by both of these teams, and Diamond has been hanging around the bottom half of the map. This is the second or third time he sort of moved towards the Dragon before now recalling. And it's just a matter of time before they make an attempt on it. As it stands though, I think all the teams, uh, all the players happy to keep farming. And the only one that's falling a little bit behind right now is in fact Kerb. He's not farming his Wraith Camp as effectively as Alex is farming his own Wraith Camp. And that's why there's a 30 CS difference between the two of them right now. Well, Millennium moving a couple of men down, Kerb. Mm, he walked over that pink ward. <laughs> should have seen it. Yep. Should be able to take it down. 
not using attack move, and that's cost you that little situation. Gambit, I think, smart decision making here. Tower in the middle may go down. There's a teleport already coming in from Warwick. It may be too late for Dragon. Smite is available. The question is, who's going to get it? Oh, they've got time here. I see Darien going straight into the middle of them. The uh, Dragon is actually taken in the end by Gambit, but we can see how low they've got. Alex Hitch finally joins at the front side, though. RNA is surely going to fall here, and Warwick will surely be chasing straight through onto things, although he is a little bit low, so they need to be careful with this one. Briefcase not connecting and only one death so far in this fight. That's on Edward's side. Gambit did get the dragon though. Yeah, very nicely done. The suppression uh, was thrown onto Aranea. It's one of the only, it's, I believe it's the only thing that can prevent you smiting under those circumstances. So Diamond Prox gets into range, manages to put a lot of damage down. I'm lying to you entirely. He didn't even do it. It's just a straight steal. <laughs> straight steal. I've just quickly rewinded, uh, rewound the battle. And Diamond Proc straight up beat Aranea. So well played there. That's thrown me off completely. <laughs> <laughs> it's not something you want just to be simply out. So here we go. We can see that one again. Yeah, there we go. This is exactly what we're talking about. Smite from Aranea was very early. I think he was anticipating a little bit more burst damage from the rest of his team. And then once again, you see a situation where Kevin is low on Dr. Mundo. He's unable to affect the back line of Gambit. And because he's not running amok amongst the Gambit members, they're able to just push Millennium backwards, push them out of the fight, and force them on the back foot, allowing the chase potentially of Riven, Lee, and Warwick to scare them back to the tower. And back to farming, I think, is the plan for both of these teams right now. It's been pretty much the uh, overlying plan for most of this game. Two and a half thousand gold lead that have, uh, Gambit have right now certainly will uh, start to show for them. CS lead in the mid lane is quite They're going big, in. and they are going to go in here, but I'm not sure that Alex will fall to this one. There's a lot to throw in there, a lot of CC. The barrel comes in. Alex knocked around all over the place, and well, it's hard to escape from that one. It's incredibly it really difficult. The fact of the matter is, that actually took a very long time. You know, they had to commit a lot of time, every single individual resource to that one, and it ended up costing them. Now, RNA and Kerb still wanting to fight with Darian and Diamond. They've got to be careful because neither of them have the ultimates available. So if they were to get CC'd with the aid of Edward, it may have been enough to get the kills. And I think that's worrying for Millennium. I think if they have to commit that much time and that many resources to killing Alex, these next team fights could go very differently. Now, once again, RNA is throwing himself at Darien. Oh, that's a great wall breaker coming in onto him, but actually, Darien doesn't really care and just hunger and strikes his way back. Yeah, right, going to yep. use that passive, keeps healing up. Turns, now he's gonna fight. He is gonna fight things. Kevin actually popping his ultimate, kind of walking in, walking out. What shall I do? I'm not quite so sure. And that's obviously gonna regen him up greatly in this one. So he's not really in danger of going down. In fact, he'll probably just reset this into, well, that top lane match that we've been seeing all along. Yeah, look at those heals. Uh, it, it, the damage from Hunter King Strike is percentage HP damage. It's 16% of the target's maximum HP. So if he's hitting Kevin, who's you know, got a Sunfire Cape and a Giant's Belt, that is a massive amount of HP. It actually heals him for 80% of the damage dealt. And all of his auto attacks, every time he hits a minion or monster or champion, he's getting health back from those as well. So it's so difficult to push a Warwick out of lane. I want to see how it transitions now as this game goes forward because the suppression is going to allow him to lock down Ezreal who's one of the slipperiest AD carries. So as long as Alexic can follow the suppression dive, I think Creatine's going to be in trouble in these, these, these upcoming fights. Now Rene just came to the top lane to make sure that that's where it stayed safe. It's, it's at half HP and in the end actually Darien had decided not to push on straight through. He's uh, almost starting a thousand gold here is uh, Darien as well so might go and turn that into something in a little while. 1700 gold for Genja to spend as well there on Jinx and he's still behind in the CS but that difference has not really got bigger. No, not at all. It's, it stayed static, and of course, as long as you're not falling further and further behind, that's fine. I think Genja's Jinx, by no means as dominant as Reckless's Jinx right now, it can still scale and offer you more damage, especially with that ultimate. I, I've talked about execution so many times, and I, I really think it needs to be stated once again, because you're going to combo that splash damage plus execute with Rivens. And as soon as Diamond Prox and Darien jump onto somebody, those two can clean up and they can carry on chasing down. So that's where the cleanup crew has to be for Gambit. Only two towers have fallen at 25 minutes, and this is by far the slowest game because I think even SK Millennium 
had more action and fights by this point in the matchup yesterday. Yeah, Millennium were a mile ahead at this point, uh, 25 minutes. Unfortunately for uh, for us, or for them, for ever, whoever, uh, it took another 25 minutes for them to actually close the game out. But they say it themselves, they're not here to be really flashy. They just want to get the job done and get the points on the board. Well, at this point in time, they're behind, and that's not going to happen. So, 3,000 gold behind Gambit, one tower down. Finally, Darian's sustain in lane allows him to push Kevin away. He's still sticking to that top lane, and you can see Aranea looking for a rinse and repeat kill on Alex. But Diamond was there to back him up. So, if they want to commit all of that time and that resources, Diamond may be able to throw a spanner in the works and... Get rid of them, as it were. Uh, Dragon's going to be coming up in about 30 seconds time. Teleport's once again available for our top laners. So within a minute or two of it spawning, I think that's going to be the next time they fight in Millennium. If they want to focus Dragon, they have to do it quicker, and they cannot afford to get it stolen away. I mean, Diamond had a very good steal last time, just straight up outsmiting Aranea. A oh, couple of recalls coming in. Alex Hitch going back in. I actually leave just five seconds until Dragon comes up. If Millennium went... Now, if they reacted to this one right now, they would have the man advantage down there, but the pink ward right at the front from Gambit, and the wards going in at the backside, not really making them feel all that confident with uh, really turning the corner and trying to get involved in the action there. No, I think the fact that they've got vision of the pit and they realize that uh, Gambit are not attempting it right now, they're going to play it a little safe. I think they've also got a very good steal potential. If Arno were to throw himself over the wall, plus Gragas Barrels. It's something you always have to consider, always. The burst of Smite plus Explosive Cask is very, very high. Right now, the fact that uh, Kerp is miles away means Dragon's been started. is gonna try Steel. Oh, he's gonna go in for that one, but, well, Diamond, safe as ever on that Smite. Edward actually uh, just sat at the back of things, trying to bully <laughs> Aaron here away, he just waits for his Vault Breaker to come off cooldown and escapes again. Gambit will be fine with that though, no need to really have any kind of risky fight. They've picked up Dragon, they just walk back off and they're going to farm a bit. Yeah, absolutely nothing was expended there, absolutely nothing. No summon spells, with the exception of Smite, no teleport was used. Darian roamed down to the bottom, he hasn't even lost out on CS really, 240 to 245. Now Millennium however, they want to try and focus this mid tower. There are four members of the team. There's a teleport coming in from Darian. It's being followed by uh, uh, Kevin. He's caught. Yeah, they hooked him in actually underneath the tower. And look at that down to half health. Darian falling at the front. There's Diamond coming in from the side. Creatine's gone very low. Super Mega Death Rocket not really having the impact they'd have liked. This is a big, messy fight. But everyone from Millennium going low there at the back. We see Genji now chasing down. Can they finish Creatine? There's the Arcane Shift. Darian's still chasing. Zap! Max Rage to get another one. And here's Darian. Flashing his way through, one more should do it. Can he get it? Yes, he can. Darian picks up that one. And just like that, Gambit picking up three kills to back away. But it's not over just yet. Aaron Ayers charging up. Aaron Ayers charging down. He goes down on the inner turret. And this is going to be a tower as well for Gambit. Aaron Ayers should not have been there. And we talked about the chasing potential. How Warwick, Lee and Riven can run you down. And of course, if you're getting kills while doing it, Jinx's passive Get Excited gives you a massive movement speed boost. Allows you to just keep chasing. After the initiation from Gambit, who started the fight first, I want to stress that. They were the ones that ran in. Kevin teleported, the rest of Millennium were running away. They weren't in the lane. So as soon as he teleports, a great hook from Edward starts that fight out, allows Gamma to get four kills, a tower, a Baron, and a 9,000 gold lead. Yeah, that's a big swing right there. And you now I love the decisiveness from Gambit as well. Take the fight, move straight back off, pick off the Baron, and go straight back home before they can even come around. Here's another look at that one. Started off with a top lane teleport. Yeah, Darian was teleporting a little bit safer. Kevin came in the middle of the lane, and the rest of his team had backed away. Nobody else was fighting. So Kevin getting caught forces Millennium to run back in. They're not in opportune position, and because they're sort of re-engaging from different angles, it allows Gambit to focus fire targets and allows Gambit to just chase down. Look at the movement speed here from Darian, as well as the get excited after the zap. It's just flash forward, land some more damage, and just keeps chasing over and over. The Gambit composition is much better at cleaning up these messy low health fights than what uh, Millennium is, and especially because Millennium didn't have a straight up engage, that's what cost him. There's Aranea, the last stand, I think, on that turret where he was looking at a lot of juicy targets, really low HP, but 
in the grand scheme of things, just losing another kill for Millennium's total. And another thing that, that happened during that fight, Darian's Infinite Duress, his ultimate was used onto Creaton. That's an important thing because it stopped him getting out of there, which was probably the biggest thing that led to his death. Yeah, and it's what we talked about very early on, how Ezreal is very you know, difficult to deal with. Darian is now getting caught out. Can they kill him? Well, it wouldn't be a week of LCS action without Darian getting caught out. Whether they can finish off a kill against him is another matter here because the rest of Gambit <laughs> actually coming down and Darian just walking away. And he's actually going to ulti in on towards Darian A here. Is he going to be able to pick up the kill from it? There is the rest of the team. The hook lands on to Darian Darian, you have all the swag. And look at Diamond. He's come around the back. He's a little bit out in no man's land, but he'll get the kick into the hook. What a combo from Gambit. Box goes down. Now they're looking for even more as they focus Kerb. He's going to use the Zonyas. They surround him and hunt him down. It's Darian that picks up that kill. Darian didn't even use his infinite duress while trying to escape. He baited so well. Just walking away, pulling both RNA and Creaton, Creaton after him. They needed to back off a little bit sooner. They lose three members. They're most likely going to lose that outer turret if the minions take it down. And the rest of Gambit are just focusing on this mid lane. They're making it very clear they want an inhibited turret first. And there is another turret going down. We have Jinx in the top lane pushing uh, that one through. I'm not sure what they're going to do to defend this inhib turret, to be honest with you. We do see a couple of guys starting to spawn in ever so slightly, but this inhibitor is going down. That is a lot of damage onto these towers. We saw in the last game from Reckless what Jinx can do to the towers as well. And it's not over. He's done that. It, uh, it's not over just yet. It, it's going to be close. Four towers. That's five towers in inhibitor. Now they want another fight. There they go. Pushing straight in. Alex sits right down the middle of them. Kevin trying to get away. It doesn't matter how tanky Mundo is. They've got enough damage to finish the thing off. And Alex almost getting involved in that one as well. This is the second inhibitor going down for Gambit. Gambit can push on for the yeah. win if they wanted to. It's a 5v4. Most of their ultimates are basically going to be available. The box is coming up as is infinite duress. If Creatin sticks too close, Darian will most likely jump on his head. Baron Buff is slowly wearing out and my word have Gambit made it effective. They can finish the game right now. They've got full HP here Gambit thanks to that regen and they're actually going to go in on towards Kirk. There's a kill for Edward. Are they going to go for finishers here? Yes they are. Aaron Ayer locked up. He goes to Genja at the back. He will be finished off though by Genja. The first Nexus turret is actually down. The second one's going to be made short work of and Gambit head over towards the fountain. A dance by Darian will seal victory for Gambit as they go 2-1 to one here in the LCS.